So I own this restaurant in Alabama City. It was right before the pandemic struck and I met this beautiful girl. I thought she loved me for who I was, but turns out she's just a gold digger and all she wanted from me was money, money, money. Well, once nobody was coming into my restaurant anymore because of the hard times a couple years back, I went through this with her. There's always this point in all of our life when everything seems to be going so well. And then suddenly a bomb drops in from nowhere, destroying our lives and everything around us. For me, that bomb was a betrayal from my loving wife, Wendy, whom I loved so much and cared about all her feelings. I would not have believed it if anyone would have told me that your wife would leave you one day for somebody much more rich. Well, such was the love that we both shared. It all started about two years ago when Wendy and all her friends came to a party at the restaurant that I owned in the streets of Alabama City. It's our family restaurant that was opened by my grandfather's father. Since then, it's been around our family and is quite popular among the people of the city. It was the first time that I had seen her there and it turned out that she has shifted and there's just some weeks ago along with her younger brother, who was in high school at that time. Wendy was really attractive and had a presence that demanded attention, and she never cared about flaunting it effortlessly. She used to stand out among all her friends as she was the center for their listening to news about other friends' love life, and she used to boast in front of them about her collection of jewelry and other things as well. I can sense by the sight of all her friends how jealous of they were from her, they used to envy her for her surreal behavior and things that she owned. And that way was how she performed in front of them. They should definitely feel so. On the other hand, I was the one who envied her friends for having her company. We both shared some eye contact at our first meeting. And I did not expect her of seeing any more after that. But she came to the restaurant again along with her friends just a few days later. She went past me, flaunting her charm and delightful smile while gazing at me. I too responded to her with a smile, and some expressions that revealed the true feelings I had for her. It was then that I knew that there was something between us. A spark. After that, her visits to my restaurant became quite common. Sometimes she would arrive early and leave after the evening, gossiping with her friends or making treats for her friends' achievements. It's was after some time that she enclosed her real feelings to me. And without taking a moment, I confessed to her my feelings as well. It was definitely the best feeling that I've ever had in my life, and I knew back then that I was going to marry her after a while. But I did not reveal my feelings to her as I cared about her feelings and did not want to impose anything on her so fast. We both dated for a period of about six months. We would often just sit at my restaurant talking about our earlier life and other stuff, and she would sometimes wait for me at night to close the restaurant. Sometimes I would get early from the restaurant to enjoy a dinner party anywhere else. Even other girls in her group get along with me so well that I would sometimes party with them along with her. She also went along with me to party with my friends, and things were going really great between us back then. It was then when we decided to marry. I'll tell you, it was a grand wedding that had all of my friends, relatives, and neighbors invited. The hall was completely lit with decorations and other stuff that made it look like paradise. On her side, it was just her brother and a few friends who were in Alabama from her own town. It was with them that she used to visit our restaurant every weekend, and her brother had just finished school at the time of our wedding, and was about to leave for her college degree in some other city. After marriage, we both shifted to my home just behind the street that enclosed our restaurant. It was a beautiful setting that had some good old buildings. Wendy and I were living the life that we dreamt of. She used to be at home helping my mother with various of her things while I was in the restaurant. In the evening, she used to get along with her friends and gossip about all sorts of stuff. 
I remember the day after our marriage. She was just so happy, boasting about the lavish lifestyle that she had in my house and the jewelry that I left her by with the wedding ceremony. Though, I felt pity for her friend, who had to listen to all those things. Gosh, and the look on their faces was just awe-inspiring. Sometimes it was really hard for me to withstand their emotions as they would reflect completely dead emotions. It was as if their souls have left their body. I mean, it made me think some days that how could they possibly be with a friend who just boasts about her life and things that she owns to make you feel jealous and wanting. But I think that's exactly what women do in front of other women. It's like a leisure activity for them. Her demand for gifts and jewelry grew over time. She would often ask me to buy her gifts, goods, and the jewelry items that she had seen in the stores. Or that she had seen her friends wear, and her thriving smile would allow me to buy her the things that she wanted. Without having a second thought, at the time of our business it was doing really well, and we had a name in the street for offering some very authentic Italian dishes that we have been doing for a very long time. People would flock from other parts of the city just to taste our mouth-watering cuisines that uplifted their hearts with aroma and freshness. I will be busy during the day with the restaurant over holding, and at night I used to visit some parties with either my friends or hers, or both of them combined. It was in one of those surreal parties that I introduced Wendy to my childhood friend Richard, who owned a grocery store just some streets away from ours, unknowingly that he would take her away from me one day. He had a really charming persona that looked even more amazing with the wealthy outlook that she used to wear. She was just the same as Wendy while she used to flaunt her richness in front of her friends. Richard, on the other hand, used to show his richness to everybody around him irrespective of the relationship that he had with them. I had clear impressions of him on the day when we first met my wife, Wendy. He began, well, the introduction by showing off his watch that he had recently bought, which, as he said, cost him some of the nice cars that he owned some time before. Though everyone just hated him for his behavior, Wendy was the one who totally liked him. I mean, I sensed from her behavior that she was impressed by his charm and richness at the time. But there was no change of emotions between the two of them as she was totally in love with me at the time. Well, things took a turn for me, yes. The deadly virus hit the city really hard. It was total chaos. People were dying like flocks, and many were hospitalized for getting serious health issues. Lockdowns were inflicted all over the states for relieving the situation and getting a hold of it. The lockdown had an adverse impact on my business. That just crumbled to the ground after the lockdown was introduced. Our restaurant had to be shut down for a period of about six months, which totally stopped my earnings and I had losses in the material that I had bought from the resellers some months before. Wendy's behavior suddenly changed. At the time, she was just always upset, even refusing to eat some days, and I suspect the reason for such behavior was my refusal to buy some of the jewelry that she has seen on social media. She was just behaving like a small child whose wishes have not been fulfilled by her parents. I was not able to withstand her abnormal behavior, and it drove me nuts to see her craving for these useless things at such a grave time. Though she apologized to me after some time for making me so angry and frustrated at the time when I was in so much trouble. I totally understood her back then, and I genuinely believed that she has changed to some extent. Though, I was going to regret this thought that I entertained in my mind after finding the real truth behind it. Our business does not get on track as the lockdown was withdrawn. We catered to some customers who visited our restaurant from the nearby areas and so. Wendy and her friends also started making their regular parties and treats at our restaurant. Their normal culture of discussing things from all around and showing the other women their riches, well, it started again. 
At least their life was getting back to normal where it was before the pandemic, and there was this new entrance of woman from our nearby street into their group who had recently married some bank official in our city. She was a friend of the other girl from the group, and so the other girl had requested her to join the group. Well, she accepted the drama invitation, and she flocked to our restaurant with her luxurious gown and jewelry that she had worn, and it took everyone to take note of her. Moreover, her beautifully crafted necklace also ignited some fire in the hearts of the other women in the group. Wendy was not able to handle her richness and charming nature, as I sensed from her expressions back then. And... I got that this necklace is going to trouble my life for so long. It was the first time that I had seen her silent among her friends in the group, and even her friends could not handle her being silent as they were telling her, go ahead, girl, speak up, interact with the other friend now. Which she did, but the spark that she carried along with her sayings, it was missing. I felt bad for Wendy as I could not look her in the position. I knew that it had something to do with the richness of the other girl, and I knew that it would certainly affect my life coming hours as well. On the other side, her friends were really happy to have someone that was way ahead of Wendy, as they were tired of listening to Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. They wanted to change from Wendy, and that was her. Apart from being so boastful and talkative regarding her wishes, she was also interested in interfering with the couple's stuff. She shared happiness in knowing of the relationship between other couples and gossiping about them with others, which was something that Wendy did not have in her. That night, as I came back from the restaurant, I came to know that she has not eaten food and was just in her suite all day long. I instantly visited her to relieve her thoughts and bring her to the game again, without knowing that something really messy was in all of me. As I entered the room, found her lying on the bed while her face was on the other side. I could have made what it would have represented. It was at that moment when I approached her that she told me to get her that lavish necklace that, well, she had seen on social media before. I tried explaining to her that I could not possibly buy that necklace which cost a hefty amount of money as the business was not going too well. It was really the case as there were merely any customers in our restaurant apart from Wendy's friends and some others who just lived near the street. But she was not getting my point that I could not afford it at this time, but I surely would when the situation seems to get a bit better. I left the room angry that night, unable to explain to her my real situation, and this whole thing continued for a while. Her behavior was totally different from then on. She was not interested in meeting her friends anymore. She would roam alone in the streets without talking to anyone at all. It was as if the tune of lockdown had inflicted a hunger for possessions inside of her. Or maybe it could be the thing to get back the place that she had in her group that was taken. Well, away with this inclusion of the other woman who now dominated the other women of the group. It was one of the evenings of the usual day when I caught sight of Richard and my wife, talking to each other one-on-one -on -one in the tables in our room. At first, I was not convinced that the other woman sitting there could be Wendy, my wife, but things were clear as I remained there for a while. It was clearly her, and as usual, Richard was just telling her about his suit and other things that he was carrying at the time. And it interested her so much that for some time she looked to forget the trauma of the necklace that she was demanding from me. They both stayed there for a while and then Richard left our restaurant for some business reason, he said. And after a while, Wendy left too. But as she was walking, she did not even take a glance at me who was standing just a few meters away from her while moving along the counter. It was after a few days of this incident that I found this new piece of jewelry within her grab that she was forcing me to buy. She was preparing as if she was going to some ceremony function of some sort. I was getting late for the restaurant, so I left immediately, and after a few hours I found my wife sitting along with her friends at the very table where they used to flaunt all day long earlier. 
It was after so many days that she had set foot among them. To my surprise, the people there in that group were even more surprised than me, as they have subtly believed that she would not ever come in front of them in their lifetime. It wasn't because they didn't love her. It was because of the fact that she left the place with such a lowering attitude that they had not wished of seeing her again. It was after a few minutes that I sensed that same intensity and glow in Wendy's attitude that she used to carry before everything was just similar to what it was earlier. Just the inclusion of that lavish bank official's wife had added one more attender to her charm. And this other woman also awestruck with the charm of Wendy. This time, she was boasting about the necklace that she bought with her or this day. It was an amazing necklace whose glow reflected even the last table of our restaurant. As I returned home, I found her sitting in my room as she was involved in her thoughts. Although she got her charm among her friend in the restaurant back then, her attitude towards me was still the same. She was not answering any of my questions or any of my requirements. Her attitude made it really hard for me to stay in that same room with her, as I was unable to feel that warmth that I felt living close to her. She was just some stranger to me with whom I was sharing the room. Over time, her attitude towards me grew even worse, as I asked her where the necklace came to her from that she was asking me to buy to which she replied that she was gifted this necklace by some of her close friends. I could not possibly believe that any friend could possibly give that thing to anyone at all. That's exactly what I told her at that moment. It did not get him really well, and she left the place right there. It was on one night I found her cell phone lying on the table while she was in the bathroom. There was a notification on her phone that got my attention towards it for a second. It was of some messages that she has been receiving at the time. Her phone lock was open so I could see it's just that, and I was totally in chaos as I saw Richard, as there were some suspicion in my mind, but I have not thought that Richard would possibly message my wife. It was him, and he was replying to some of the messages that my wife has sent to her. It was after scrolling through the messages on her phone that I found out that it was Richard who was gifted the necklace to my wife after she asked him for it, and that there was something going on between them two for a long while that is not so ethical. It got me really mad, as I've never thought that my wife would betray me for a piece of a necklace. As she came outside of the bathroom, I confronted her about the things that she had done behind my back, and I told her that she had broken my trust and I would not forgive her for this ever. She broke me, and between from completing my words and told me that she was in awe of telling things straight to me, and this is possibly the right time for it. She said that as I have known about her and Richard, I should also know that they both love each other and are planning on getting married. She also said that she wants me to divorce her, as I'm not good for her and that she deserves someone better than me, just like Richard. I was completely blown off by her words, and I could not possibly tell you the way I felt as she said these demeaning things towards me. I've loved Wendy so much, and I could not possibly imagine my life without her. At that moment, I wanted to, well, just do something terrible— I left my room and went out to someplace alone. Throughout the time, I was just thinking of her and nothing else. I was even cursing myself for not giving her the necklace that she demanded. Or this would have never happened. Update number one. Two days have passed since Wendy asked me to divorce her. And since then, I did not get her, well, sight once. For some days, I've been coming early to the restaurant, and I leave it late at night due to some ongoing interior work that has been going on. In spite of getting so much busy at work, I could not resist thinking about Wendy's words that shook me from the inside. I was just thinking of all these things when I got a hold of her and Richard, sitting together at one of the tables in the restaurant. The nerve... They were even holding hands and discussing the things with so much excitement as she used to flaunt in front of her friends. It looked as if she was doing it all for some purpose, 
and that was wishing of tarnishing my image in front of others. After talking to my lawyer, I made the divorce paper, and listed all the surreal informations and terms there, and I right away presented that draft to my wife, and she took no time to sign it. She took away all her stuff with her after that to Richard's apartment, and after two days, the two actually went and got married in one of the prominent buildings in our neighborhood. Both of them invited me to come, <laughs> but I did not go there because of, well, uh, my own reasons. The next morning, I found her flaunting the stuff about her ceremony to the other women in her group, and as usual, they all were all ears to every single detail about her wedding ceremony or the gifts that she had gotten from her new husband, Richard. I could not withhold the sight of her boasting about all her new husband's wealth anymore, so I switched places. But I was not able to let go of her excessive voice that was significantly audible to every corner of the restaurant. One day, as I was checking out the situation in my restaurant's kitchen, I glanced at a look from the front table of my restaurant that was visible from there, and I found that both Richard and Wendy were sitting there. They, too, were sitting against each other, holding hands and making all sorts of romantic appeals to each other. I walked out of there at the same instant, burning with anger and frustration from inside. One thing was clear, inside of my mind, that I would not let go of this whole thing so easily. I would take my revenge on Richard for destroying my loving life with Wendy. Thereafter, it became normal for them to flock to our restaurant regularly. I just thought that it had something to do with me being there, as Richard has always been so indifferent to me. He always felt joy in downsizing me among other friends. From the beginning, he's always tried to be super rich and boastful in front of others. Sometimes, I do think that both Richard and Wendy are quite similar in terms of their boastful nature, and now they both were using their surreal nature against me. Updates Number two. It's been about two weeks since my divorce and my ex-wife and her new husband are a regular disguise to me at my restaurant. And now my feelings of compassion and love for her have turned into vengeance and hatred. I want a revenge for the pain and suffering that I've received from her betrayal of love for a lavish lifestyle and extreme wealth that Richard seems to have. It was this thing that I came to know about Richard that gave me an extra edge over him in this surreal battle between us. I came to know this thing about Richard that he has so much debt running on him that if he tries to relieve it, then he would have to sell all the property that he's owned from his forefathers and would have to foresee the extra lavish lifestyle that he owns. So... I use this knowledge to frame a proper plan for the destruction of Richard and for the annexing of my revenge on him for getting my loving wife away from me. I, thereafter, closely administered every person with whom he's been in contact with for the past few years. After that, I contacted them to know the information about the money lending that he borrowed from them and other details regarding it. In this way, I got hold of the real details about his debt from various people and companies that were sufficient for having him dethroned. After having collected these details, I leaked them on social media and other general platforms. Within a few hours of posting it, I caught the interest of every person with whom he has borrowed money from and the situation and just made them ask for their money with him back. There, I also enlisted that he has some sort of trouble in his business. Therefore, he's trying to sell his property and move to some other city. This has a tremendous effect on the people they came flocking to his property and shop, asking for their money that he has rented from them altogether. At first, he tried convincing them that he would return their respective money after a bit of time, but they were not in the mood of getting promises. They just wanted their withholdings back. Getting sight of the enraging crowd that's gathered around his property, he had to sell it, all of his property, and provide everyone with their respective money that they have given him. After that, he had nothing, and so he found difficulty in managing his expenses, getting a hold of the whole situation, and, well, long story short, Wendy left him 
alone, at his worst. I was finally relieved to see this broke karma had played this role on him. Update number three. It was just three days after I revealed the true colors of Richard in front of Wendy and everybody else. I knew that he would find it one way or the other that it was me and not anyone else who did this against him. But I was not aware of the consequences that it would have on me, as I did not know how low he can get. To my discomfort, he found that I was the one who has significantly released this information about him on the internet. Because of which, he lost his property and everything other than that he owned, including Wendy. But instead of pressing any action towards me, he went ahead to spread some peculiar information about my ex-wife. He spread information on the internet that Wendy is really all demanding and runs after money. This is the significant reason why she divorced me and married him, and that soon she left him after he has drowned all his wealth and property. This thing broke like a forest fire on the internet, tarnishing her image and making people furious about her on the internet. After that, she was trolled terribly by the local users on social media in our town. Moreover, the reaction that she got from the local people was just so disheartening for her. Nobody would tell her after that or sit with her in the restaurant or any other place. She simply was not allowed to enter various shops or even go in other places. Before that, she was living with her friend with whom she used to flock to our restaurant with and other places, but now she's disowned by all her friends and other relatives who live there. They did not allow her to move or sit with them. Her friend with whom she was staying earlier also told her to leave her place as she was asked by her landlady to get her out of the apartment. Troubled with all this, she went to her brother, who was doing college in some other city. She did not have the grit of getting hold of my sight after what she did. After that, I got along with another girl, whom I've been dating for quite some time, and we both are thinking of getting married this year. My business has been slowly getting back to its original stage, as it was before the introduction of the lockdown. So normally these sides of the story are one side to the other in the comment section, with some people saying, yeah, OP, I'm with you, and the other people are on someone else's side. However, they were not very forgiving for Richard and Wendy at all. They said Richard is just a jerk who goes around flaunting his money and trying to steal other people's women, especially your friend that you grew up with. That is so vile. And Wendy is no more than just a gold digger, and she does not deserve anything. But at the same time, there were some people saying OP was actually a doormat, getting walked all over by everyone in his life. I just want to know from you guys your exact perspective about this story, because it was definitely a dramatic one. Drop your thoughts in the comment section directly below. My name's Mr. Redito. If you're new to the channel, I want to welcome you. I narrate stories every single day, so hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and remember, it's cool to be kind.